God bless you, church. God bless you. Well, I might as well soak it up. Few and far in between. Uh, amen. Well, thank you, church. Appreciate it. Appreciate the welcome. Amen. Uh, would you remain standing? I uh, just want to offer a word of prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we deem it a blessing and a privilege to be here, Lord. Uh, the most blessed people here in New York and PA and our friends, Lord, to have lived down through the last 40 years and to see your word being made manifest as your prophet uh, on the second coming of the Lord told that there were three phases ahead in his second coming. And it's one thing to step out and say it, but it's another thing for you to come behind it and vindicate it. So Lord, we know that we're here in the vindicated word from Malachi 4, and indeed the seven thunder revival is on. So Father, we don't have enough praise, words to thank you and to bless your name. So Lord, I just want to kind of uh, give a little direction here to the people today and, and may you bless the reading of the word and the words that I would speak and may it be, just be a mighty day and may many more be sealed and refilled and delivered. We'll be careful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory for we ask it in Jesus' name. For sake, amen and amen. I'd like to invite your attention to Colossians 3. And Philippians 1, Colossians 3, verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, and which he will appear on his third phase, he's here, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. In the Philippians 1 verse 6, be in confidence of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. May God is a blessing to read him his word. You may be seated. Well, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord again. Amen. And to hear the praises and the singing and feel the Holy Spirit. I kind of sat in the back. It was very hard being home and trying to watch things. So I kind of went in the back there during the first part of the service and I was really being blessed. Well, church, I want to greet you, New York and PA and the internet and all our visitors that have come here to fellowship with us today. And I certainly want to greet uh, Brother Anudu and his church over in uh, Nigeria. God bless you, Brother Anudu, on the hookup. Amen. Appreciate that. And um, you appreciate all the testimonies? Amen. Because they ought to encourage one another. I know they certainly encourage me, especially this brother over in Nairobi. Uh, the, I mean, the individuals that, that are part of the group on page 304. <laughs> yes, and to see it, the revelation, he's not here. He hardly has any books or tapes or anything. And yet he picked up the... You must forgive brotherly kindness or you ain't going nowhere because faith is based on forgiveness. So that's why the Lord revealed brotherly kindness right in Jude there and if some have compassion and that opened up the book of Revelation to me. Did you catch that? So you get all the arts out of your lives and Forgive, and the book of Revelation will certainly be open up to you. It's on the third phase. 
and you will be in the revival. So uh, anyway, I would certainly uh, appreciate it and I'd like to take a little thought, Brother Norman, um, set your affection on things above on the third phase. Amen. <laughs> well, I kind of want to speak to my church today, New York, PA. And anyway, what I'm speaking is to them. And then all my other friends there, well, you know, you want to listen. If it's a blessing to you, fine. But as I say, normally that when I speak to my church, nobody else is here. And whatever, what goes on here, well, it's the church. But then now I've had the faith to open up to bless friends everywhere. So then sometimes did you get some criticism in there? Well, I don't appreciate that because uh, I don't go into your church. But you come into mine. So therefore, be a gentleman and be a Christian and just accept the blessings. Okay? And anything that I'm saying, you don't understand it, will you contact me? You don't have to criticize, just, just contact me. And I'll give you a reasonable answer of my uh, salvation and what I'm preaching. So we all understand? It's okay. So I kind of want to speak to my church in New York and PA. Now, number two, I, like, I want to exhort the fivefold ministry for the third phase, the ministry of the Spirit. And now the third phase is here. Uh, now we can have, and now we can have the minister. No, in here, you see. So therefore, he told me before we can really get going into the revival that uh, you have to, he said, starting today and next Sunday and next Sunday night, he said there's two things that's needed. First is brotherly, a revelation of brotherly kindness that they may be blessed and, and have faith. And then, when they have brotherly kindness, then I can reveal the seven thunders to them. So he told me to, to drop back today and uh, to uh, play a, um, a, a, an audio message from Canada, Montreal, 1976, about 30 years ago, and then today. And he said, I want it in French, so it's in French, and I go out to my friends outside. And then uh, next Sunday morning, uh, he said, go down to Beaumont, anointed in commission, and lay out all the hidden mysteries. And then Sunday night, forgiving for Christ's sake. Uh, brotherly kindness. And on that tape, I was getting it ready, preparing it for the internet, and I got to page nine. It's in Spanish and English. Uh, I, I mentioned about Georgia, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, right here, put the thunder from them. Some have compassion from Georgia right there. So the thunder from Georgia is on that tape. And it's on the Internet also. So that's basic, and that's uh, foundation. That's primary, and that's what. then we can have a revival. You know, it's kind of like, uh, because Daniel and Daniel 10... Uh, a thing was revealed to Daniel. And then when he, that thing was revealed to him, what did he do? He, 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 he set his affection on things above. He began to kind of just fast a little and praying and seeking God. And then uh, uh, because uh, the angel was, he, he was detained 21 days because the uh, prince of Persia was fighting him. So don't give up. Okay? The prince of Persia, they're going to fight. But you're going to contend. 
So a thing has been revealed to you today. You know that you know that you know that you are on the third phase. You know that the dynamics are here. You know that people are being sealed and refilled, not only here on the internet, but these are signs back to you. So if there ever was a time in your tenure as a Christian, this is the hour to forget about everything because it's here now. So this is the only way I can exhort you. So don't sit around here now, but you get into it. And we thank God, if you notice that you may be seated, that since uh, um, Penn Harris, the, the level of the anointing has been getting greater and greater. That, that's God speaking to you. He's telling you it's here. Get into it. Amen. And you see what God is doing? He's letting uh, the young people, he, he's sealing them at the young people's meetings. Right off of Brother Branham's tapes. See? So, you know, for you parents, you really should come. You want to see your children get sealed. Why don't you come and sit in the back and pray? Don't send your children, bring them. And then you're going to have something. You might get sealed sitting back there too. Amen. We're in revival. So, okay now. So, we hear, how, how many believe you're on the third phase? Oh, wonderful. They believe it. Wonderful. Okay. You may be seated. So this is, uh, as you know, I guess you do know, Brother, Brother Terry picked it up. He said in his testimony that uh, this has been a ministry of uh, prophecy. So that, and that's where I get in trouble because I'm prophesying way back since uh, November 10, 1964. And, and the minister don't understand it. But I hope today that they get some understanding. Amen. Amen. So, okay, here's a prophecy from um, May 6, 1992. I kind of skip around here. Anyway, I'll share this with you May 6. The Lord just spoke to my heart. He speaks to you too. Now watch. He said, he told me anyway, the third pull was here as the original faith, the faith. We had to contend earnestly for the faith once delivered and restored back by Malachi 4. And here's the contending. Through our first phase, second phase, now the first phase for me started uh, December 26, 1965. And I began to contend after I knew that the Lord, the Lord spoke to me that morning, and said Elias has come already and the shout of the king is in the camp. So then I began to contend for the faith. So, uh, and we had to earnestly contend for the faith once to live it, restored back by Malachi 4, through our first phase, second phase, and now as we reach our third phase, we act, watch, what's going on here today? We actually connect with Malachi for a third pull, which is original apostolic faith, the faith. Now I'm reading this back to you today, come in here because now you're under the understanding, your understanding has been opened, and you're under the opening of the word. So everybody out there should, ex or should understand what I'm telling you today. There shouldn't be no why, who, that's finished with. Because the, the opening of the word is here. Amen. Amen. So don't get quiet on me. Don't get quiet on me. I feel it coming. <laughs> My God. Amen. I, I said, where's this fire at? Brother Baloma's telling me and Brother Joey's telling me the fire's in there. Well, here I am. Go give me some fire. Wow. Okay. You may be seated, but keep your motors humming. Listen, I can tell when you are listening through here and listening from here. I know the difference. 
So keep the motor humming from here. Not here. It's up here, it gets quiet. You get, you get very quiet. You can, almost, you, you can almost hear a pin drop on cotton. That was a good one, huh? You may be seated. See what they say. He said, a pin drop on cotton. That's how quiet it gets when I start speaking here. Amen. Okay, now. So as you come up out of that mess you've been in all these years, have you come up out of it? Yeah. Wonderful. Can't understand, can't understand nothing. And get up on that third phase today. You connect with the third pull, the opening of the seven seals. It locks right in. See it, Nathaniel? The Holy Spirit was, he was all down through here talking to Nathaniel all the time. See it, Nathaniel? He sure did. Because he's doing some mighty preaching. So I know he sees it. Now, do you see it, church? You may be seated. You see it, church? See it, Pennsylvania? All right. Okay, you may be seated. It locks in. We actually connect with Malachi for his third pull, which everybody don't even know what it is, and we connect with it. We raise up on that third phase and connect with it, and by the grace of God, in Penn Harris, June 27th through June 30th, we raise up on the third phase and connect it with it, and we are still there. Amen. Which is the original apostolic faith, the faith, watch, with signs, wonders, and miracles, an outpouring of the Holy, of the Holy Ghost that will that will happen. So now here's where, uh, because this is me now. I had to contend in all kind of things out there since uh, 1964. So we don't have to say anything. So I, if I want to say what I got to say today, from here on out, uh, he, he told me what to do. A uh, him that hear it, let him hear. And him that forbear, forbear, refuse, refuse, but I'm speaking to him that hear it. Amen. So we don't have to say anything. That's the faith being revealed. So all, here it is, so all they're arguing and fussing and what is this and the critics and I don't understand that, Brother Coleman. And Brother Coleman, uh, you think you're the eighth messenger? And are you the voice of the archangel? You're taking God's glory. You think you're Jesus Christ. I'm finished with that. I ain't got nothing to do with that. I've been out there already. I'm reading. You may be seated. You may be seated. So I'm still writing. This is what he told me to write. So the day that we strike our third phase, and I say, well, maybe today, huh? prophecy we finally did it immediately connects right into Malachi for its third pull the opening of the word and then we are back to the watch to the word and the spirit reference the spoken words original seed this will be preached as the revelation of the son of man making you ready thank God there's some servants of God coming on to be anointed and filled with the Holy Ghost, a five-fold ministry to preach the revelation of the Son of Man, and this, we received a sign of this at Penn Harris. Is that right? As far as me, my, my ministry, what I'm concerned, I thank God I stood for this far, up to this third phase here today. If it's God, if it's his purpose for me to go on, I'll go on. But if not, I'll just stay around here and, you know, kind of uh, teach a little bit and go on. I feel, a amen. And so, therefore, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. From henceforth, there's a crown laid up for me. Believe as I was this. All right, you got it? So that's the way it is. So what the Lord told me to do, to prophesy about, it has come to pass. It's vindicated. So I'm not... 
I don't care what they say, you don't understand this, critic that, and criticize this. That's fine. That's all right. I got no more to do with it. I've done what he told me to do. Amen. And I remember once, uh, because I ministered Brother Fiore and Brother Balomo and Brother Frank remembers, way back in the 60s, he, uh, he, he said, Brother Bram, I, I'm going to stand with you uh, to the end. And Brother Bram said, Brother, make sure you make the resurrection. So we're here to make sure we make the resurrection. And we connect with Malachi 4, third pull, the opening of the seventh seal, as the true word of God, the faith. Okay, let's nail it down. The faith restored back by Malachi 4 and re-preached in New York City since 1966. Has it been preached? Off it, it came off the shout. And it's at this time that the seventh thunder from page 304, at this time when you connect into the prophet's third pull, and there's a promise laying there for you, page 304, the fourth seal, utter its seven thunder voices to reveal the faith. You see it now? It will utter its voices to you. Be no more questioning. At that day you shall know, but wait. Don't get all nervous and frustrated. Sit down and wait. And this will be preached as a revelation of the Son of Man, and so on. And I went to Europe, South Africa, South America. Why did I go there? To contend for the faith. That's what I went for. Okay, praise God. Seven thunders give faith for rapture and grace. So we are here. Amen. So the Lord told me to come in here and say these things to you. And as you will find out, uh, you want to bring this revival. And I'm waiting to be healed as you bring the revival. Okay, a vindicated servant. Spoken word, the original seed, volume two. I want to exhort the ministry. Uh, St. John 13, 20. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receives whom, whosoever I send receives me. He that receives me receives him that sent me. A vindicated servant. Oh, brother, there's a thousand sermons laying right there. That's right. Uh, it's a law of God. Receive it. It's a law of God. Receive it. Jesus said, he that receives them that I send receives me. That's God's law. And now, them that he sends, and them that receives me receives him that sent me. Wish we had time to linger on that. You can only serve God as you do and believe the servants that God sends. You can only serve God on earth, see, as God's servants that sent on earth by divine inspiration interprets the word to you. So I have interpreted the word to you for 40 years, 42 years, by divine inspiration. So my, to bring you, and the purpose is to bring you to perfection, a perfect man, Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. So now, in this fivefold ministry, take on the whole arm of God, Santa Maria, California, 1962. Uh, his army, he presents his army in the form of five offices. Apostles, prophets, teachers, past evangelists. Uh, that's his army, his soldiers, commanding officers, all with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, waiting out there to meet the enemy on any grounds he comes upon, to meet the enemy with the word of God. Each one backing one another up. Each minister will back one another up. They will not criticize one another. You know why? Because it will be Christ in the ministry. And that's why the ministry had to wait for the dynamics, which just happened here in Penn Harris. And look how Christ, you can look how Christ dropped down into Brother Musgrove and, and also address situations in this church. And look how he hit Brother uh, Nat and, and addressed the fishing poles and so forth. See, that is Christ. They don't fight one another. They back up one another. I mean, look at Raymond Thompson. 
I mean, a masterpiece of a message. Look there. And the things that he spoke for this church. You may be seated. <laughs> I'm trying to show you what the fivefold ministry is and will be. Look at this one. You may be seated. See, enter say. Uh, right here during these past seven months, I was told that I have no authority to say I shall not die. I said, I can't say that? He said, no. So then, what did God do? I didn't say nothing. God dropped on Brother Raymond. He said, I shall not die. Say it. He made you say it. Well, then if you said it, why, why can't I say it? But I was told I could not say it by a minister. You got it now? That's what I'm talking about. Bunch of nonsense. Amen. But brother, God made Brother Raymond take the microphone and put it out to you and made you say, I shall not die. God gave it to me back in 1970 down in the Brown Tabernacle, but I'm told this year I can't say it. I don't have no authority. You may be seated. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. See what I'm trying to tell you? This is a fivefold ministry. Because they are ministering to the body. It's Christ. It doesn't matter if the, if the brother's from Tucson or South Africa. If the body comes together, he'll use his own mechanics to minister to his body. Amen. I see you, you're getting understanding. You may be seated. Amen. Glory. <laughs> that one got him, huh? Amen, PA. Amen. You got it? You may be seated. Each one back and one another up with him, the chief captain, not out there in front up here, above, back behind, but in them. That's the army vindicating what? His resurrection by proof of his works. St. John 14, 12, Jesus said, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall I do also. What is it? Here's what it is. Is God in the church in these five predestinated offices. He told you that the fivefold ministry is his mechanics. Did you understand that? Amen. Or do you understand that statement? Amen. Okay, your body is your mechanics, right? Amen. And you're Christ's mechanics. Amen. So Jesus cannot be here in the flesh. Amen. So therefore, but his spirit will be here. Amen. So he picked out a fivefold ministry, he's picking out, to be his mechanics. Amen. And he anoints his mechanics with his dynamics and that's Christ and they rightly divide the word and they don't stick one another I hope you get it I'm trying to show you that it's a very deceiving age and I'm your pastor now uh, the internet I'm speaking to my church now please understand that so don't <laughs> You know, don't get shook up, don't get nervous. Maybe you see A very deceiving age. And you're going to have to be very careful in this third phase. Amen. You're going to know what the fivefold ministry is. Well, praise God. What is it? Is God in the church in these five predestinated offices backing up every word that he said with the Holy, here it is, Holy Spirit himself in there, which is the word made manifest. Proven his resurrection, proven that he lives. This will be the third phase ministry, the ministry of Jesus Christ. You got it now? Okay. So now, now the third phase is here, and now we can have the manifestation of the bride's seventh on revival. Okay. Now this is to my church, okay? Brother Ray Thompson's uh, uh, message come up higher 
to the glory of the third phase. So church, you're up there now on the third phase, uh, which is vindicated. And the third phase will vindicate the first phase. Now church, we've been uh, by and large uh, as a whole for all these 40 years in the message being uh, nurtured and so forth and nourished by the word of the Lord from, the, from God's prophet. But by and large, we've been in the humanistic realm. And I call it the first phase. Then, I've been through this before, a divine revelation it would be the second phase. And that's where, by God's grace, I've been up there in divine revelation, bringing all these revelations to you, prophesying it to you. And I'm prophesying an experience uh, told by inspiration and also foretelling. Now, I went through there, I already read the quotes and everything on there, and you know what it is. So I was foretelling of this, which is here now, it's here now. So I have rightly divided the word to you. Should be no more question to my ministry. Then the third that was your now, now you have divine revelation here. Amen. Because even though you don't have some don't have the Holy Ghost yet, but you have divine revelation. Amen. And now, and by divine revelation, where you are now, you up on the third phase, the vision, thus saith the Lord, or the word of the Lord made manifest. Amen. Then is thus saith the Lord. So now we're on the third phase where the word will be made flesh. And you will go from faith to charity and be formed into the word image. So by divine revelation, stay up there until you're sealed. And then you'll be formed into the word image. And then you'll know you're on the third phase with thus saith the Lord. So don't drop back down now because Brother Raymond put us up there. And I'm only coming behind you to set your affection on things above on the third phase. Amen? I'm here as your past exhorting you. So since Penn Harris meetings, you may be seated. God's presence has been with us in a mighty way. Can we say amen? amen. The Holy Spirit has given us signs of his presence, the ceilings, uh, because Terry Portis and, and Brother uh, Nathan Barntrager and uh, Avery Phil and Philip uh, Rissler Jr., and also sealing Brother Fernando a Friday night, and then also on the internet. Now, what I'm going to say now is only to my church. Again, I have to say that. And I'm, the Lord told me to do this, and I'm going to do it. Because I have to do it. Amen. Now, um, so this is to my church, okay? On the internet, you're my friends, but this is to my church. Uh, now, what I'm going to say now is only to my church. This is my testimony. You have your testimony? Well, I got mine. Yeah. Amen. Amen. September 20th, 1974, started the season when God began to manifest himself by revelation and began to appear, catch the word appear, by manifestation in three phases. I've been through this now, but I'm coming back again because there's those in here and I'm responsible for their souls. And I want them to know what ministry they're sitting under. Because I have to give an account, I have to give an account for them. And which, which you know what it is, a brotherly love, holy decency, now place in Christ. Now, sad to say, a lot of ministers, they receive the seven thunders, give faith. Well, they know that Brother Bram said that, and now it's revealed. But they do not accept, and they walked away, uh, when, I, when he began to appear by manifestation in three phases. They don't uh, uh, take that. A group went out in December 77, and another group went out in, in July 81 from Penn Harris, and then ones and twos and threes, and then another group went out in 2000. They don't accept the manifestation. Yes, sir. Send them to give faith, sure. But anything else, we don't have to take that from you. You're not taking anything from me. I'm taking it from the message. 
So I'm just, you know, getting this off my chest. Amen. Uh, so now, you know where it comes from. Why am I against organized religion? Page 38. The church age has rejected the Christ. And Christ is the word and had rejected it. And he was on the outside. The only church age that we have of Christ on the outside, knocking, trying to get in. And this angel's message, messenger from God, uh, from God, was echoing this message on the earth to come out of Babylon, come out of the organization. Now, the Holy Spirit today, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is that angel. Now, that's what these ministers cannot receive. The manifestation down in Georgia was the angel. But they don't receive that. It's sad to say. Then the thunders, the manifestation. The manifestation in Fort Wayne, 1975, when I preached on the seven thunders Friday night, it actually, literally thundered seven times. Every, everybody got quiet. But they heard it. Some recorded it on their tape recorders. But nobody said a word. Then Saturday night, the spirit and the bride say, come. Brother Fiore was there, and my special friend came into the dressing room there, and he hugged me and said, Brother Joe, that was the voice of God. That was a manifestation. But my special friend received it. And just waiting now. So my message, if it's... God's will will be on this third phase, will be to my church, New York and PA, and over there, Revelation 22, 17. A thirst, even whosoever will, come. That's what I'm going to speak to. Amen? Amen, Pennsylvania? Okay. The Holy Spirit today, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is the angel trying to get the people back to the word. He brought the revelation of the prophet's message to get you back to the word. So don't worry about the man. I mean, just uh, listen and receive what is being said. The revelation, does it bless you? Are you basking in it? Are you being blessed in it? Well, then receive it. Well, here's why. These three phases was to get you back to the Word, which I just read to you. The faith. We connect into the opening of the Word now. Because the three phases got you back to the Word. It can't vindicate dogmas. There's no life in them. He's life. Notice the Laodicean church age had denied him, rejected him, and put him on the outside. So now, so then, on birth pains, Phoenix, Arizona, 1965, page 27, these men, if they can pick it up, if they can pick up this and go out with it, they can make more sense to it, to bring it to a, a place. Now watch what he said. I, Brother Brandon, I just want to lay this seed, seven thunder, seven seal seed. He laid it out. Then he hoped some man would come on and pick it up. To, to, he says that they'll go out with it. They can make more sense to it, to bring it to a place. I just want to lay out the seed, but I hope they make it come to life. Do you have life here? Are they receiving life? So this come by three phases. Brotherly love, brotherly kindness, holy decency, seventh under inspiration, place in Christ, seventh under manifestation. So we want to speak on that today. I don't want to take too much time because we're in revival anyway. Praise God. So, so quickly, you know my testimony, I've been over it, but he told me to bring this part back. Uh, here we are. So it was August 22nd up in Canada. He spoke to me, he said, you know about the birth and all that. So now, the three steps revealed to you, hidden, 
and my second coming. Brotherly love, brotherly kindness. Holy decency, seven thunders. Place in Christ adoption. As you were a sign of the two former steps, so are you now to be a sign of the third step, place in Christ. And I got cursed for this, but I still was a sign. So understand, my son, the Spirit shall be released on the third step. And you shall be a sign of this ministry. You shall return in power. You had your final test. You shall return and release the power on the third step. Water, word, seven seals. Blood, seven thunder, revelation. Spirit, Holy Ghost, birth. And this happened in 1983. The birth started. Very careful. Listen. Went out to Fort Wayne, and there the breaking of the seventh seal, and it broke. And the Holy Spirit poured out in Fort Wayne. We came back here, and right on through New York in September, October, November, and right on across the world. Amen. That was the burn. But then, 1984, something else happened. And here's what he said. That's birth. And where do you go from birth? You go up to adoption, right? Okay. Don't get quiet now. Up here. Here. Don't try to figure this out. Just receive it. Because you don't have to figure it out because it already happened. So what's the figure? Well, you told me I have to do this here. Your adoption, my adoption, not yours not no other minister in this world my adoption your adoption is on this wise one i had to go through brotherly kindness age brotherly kindness first phase seven thunders power for service i received virtue power for service on february 23rd uh, on uh, four this saying i walked out had been down to jack bell's that sunday night the Lord spoke to me, and he said, take back to New York for this saying. And I came back from Beaumont in February. I came here, and I preached for this saying, and the fire fell. And there, and there was virtue, power for service. For me, to minister under that all these years. So I'm just trying to give you understanding here. Now, your adoption is on this wise, brotherly kindness, First phase, seven thunders, power, power for service. Second phase, dynamics, seven living voices. Third phase, my third phase, not yours. Yours is now. Okay, mine. Can I have mine? Pennsylvania? Thank you. Well, but well, the devil fights this. All right. So my adoption is on this wise. It started, maybe seated, January 1984. And it went on for 20 years to December 31st, 2003. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know this. So I kept, I was very nervous because what it said here. Uh, one in 2001 I was trying to explain it to a brother here and I, I called it A and B but it really is one I got one here one virtue your ministry as a sign of adoption it's only a sign returning in power harder trials and this is what made me very nervous I said well, I'm in this and then finally December 31st I went through everything. I mean, in 1982, uh, all those messages I preached, and I wound up with uh, cancer in the colon. I went down to see a doctor Shuby, picked it out, sent me down to a holistic clinic in Asbury Park, and they flushed it out. And, and they told me that two or three million Americans, all they have to do is to come to a holistic clinic and get it flushed out. But the doctors won't tell them. And then 1990, uh, um, Sister Jean Peters, God bless you, Sister Jean. She sent me a letter 
and Michael Coombs was down in Pennsylvania in 1990, and I went down with Joanne, and he told Joanne that uh, I had six months to live. He told Brother Hess. He told Brother Hess what to do for me to get the bovine from the, from the cow or whatever. And it worked. Put the little pieces in, in my vegetables, and, and the gray pallor left me, and I was 1990. So that's twice. And then, of course, the last six years, forget about it. Amen. It's my adoption on this wise. Not yours, mine. So, number three, brotherly kindness, seven thunders, three, dynamics, seven living voices. First, the voice has got to be birth. And uh, you want the word for that? Sure, blasphemous names, page 39 and 40. You've been birthed into this, into this, into this, into this. That happened to me between 1966 and 1974. Then after that, then after the thunders come, then 75, I had to be tested in the wilderness. Amen. Birth, tested. Then after the uh, spirit fell in 83, because the Holy Ghost birth come in here across the world there, then 84, now the, the, the virtues have got to be proven to be in there. Amen. First is birth. Then it's tested in the wilderness, written is written is written. And then 84 up to now, it's got to be proven to be in there. Amen. And the only way it can be proven, all kind of tests must come. Amen. Only a sign now. I, I'm not Jesus Christ. I'm a, it's a sign. I'm not taking God's glory. I'm not making you worship me. This is what... These things I just told you has been told to me. That's what I had to go through. Amen. Now, that's one. And then seven months, this past seven months, in a transition period. And all hell turned loose. But, but so did heaven. That's right. And the inspiration, the Lord told me, February 5th through March 5th, uh, he told me to put Michael in there, to lay the seat, and I did. And then, uh, Penn Harris, Brother Raymond nailed it down. So the Lord made him say that to vindicate what I spoke February 5th. That's the fivefold ministry. So you got it now? The seeds that were sown February 5th through March 5th is vindicated. Now. Louder than that. Oh. Okay. So this was, maybe seen it. This was uh, my adoptions on this wise. In other words, before I can be adopted, I had to go through the last 22 years harder trials. You got it? Now number two, which I've said B uh, since 2001, adoption, speaking the word, and we're here now. Glory. Thanks be to the living God. I'm still alive and kicking. I got a kick from the pusher, but I'm still kicking. I owe a man, but I can still kick, man. Amen, Brother Kevin. I'm coming up out of this wheelchair also. Amen. Glory. So now we're on the third phase. Hey, we're here. Glory to God at last. Adoption, placed in Christ, speaking the word. You may be seated. Thank God. This is what he told me I had to do this. It's been done. Okay. Now we're on adoption, the third phase. The faith, third pull. 
speaking the word. So understand this day, and you understand today, what the real revelation is, uh, the, he was telling me. You are to be assigned first of each revelation and position, and that's why the last 22 years I had to be assigned of what's here now, I had to be assigned of it. Amen. Nothing that I did, it's what he told me I had to do. You ought to be assigned first of each revelation and position to my bride. After you have proven each revelation, then my people shall enter in and by faith partake of that revelation in its season. And it's here now. Well, who do you say this is? Okay. I have told my experiences by inspiration. I went through that to prophesy, and I prophesied the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy. That's where I got it from. Seven seals, seven thunders, that's where I got it from. So it means to tell the experience by inspiration or to foretell. And I, and I have been assigned to you, New York and PA, an adoption place in the Christ, speaking the word is here. You ought to be assigned first. Okay, I just uh, uh, we can read that to you. So now the word has been rightly divided to you since January 6th in New York, 1963, for 43 years. It's not off the word, it's on the word. God may show sure that. That's why he gave divine revelation, to make sure it was on the word. Now, Brother Branham said, the prophet makes the word real. Here's how shows the people the hour we're living in because if they only see it in the hour past lay out a seer blind wretched middle we we finish if they only can look there and read the uh, revelation 3 forget it our past then there's no hope for the church so the church must see it in present tense so god sends his prophet to manifest the present tense of it. Then after it's over, and then it's history. So there was history laying there, and you couldn't do anything with it. So now, what God did, he gave a revelation to make the church see it in present tense. You, you, you understand now? All these years, Joseph perfection, Heaven thunders, present tense. That had to be done. Because if we just came in and just sat around and prophet said, prophet said, we'd be nothing here. But he gave a divine revelation to keep you in present tense. On your toes, contending, moving. He throw you down some barley here or there, Ruth. But keep on going on. You're going to meet Boaz one day. And now you're ready to meet Boaz. You got it? So, since November 1064, inspiration, I have ministered to you in the present tense by faith, revelation, inspiration. Okay, quickly. Okay, here's, maybe see it. A lot of my critics, they don't understand this. Why cry and speak? Page 30. Oh my, for you see, faith sees what God wants done. Well, I hope this goes in. Faith doesn't look at the present time. I don't look at what you in. I look at what he says you're going to be. And I'll preach it to you like that. God told me that, that you were predestinated, you were called justified and already glorified so I preach it to you like that amen you got it don't look at this look at what he said you're going to be amen I, I want you to understand my ministry you may be seated uh, amen. Uh, 
Okay. For you see, you may see that faith sees what God wants done. I hope this goes in, he said. J Jacob Grace does a perfection. So I see a seven color rainbow coat. I don't know when it's coming, but it's coming. And now in the third phase, it's here. You're going, to be, you're going to begin to put it on by adding to your faith, virtue, knowledge, as part of the coat. That's your wedding garment. Faith doesn't look at the present time. If faith did, you give up. Faith doesn't see this here. You may be seated. Faith, here it is now. Faith looks to see what God wants done. And he told me three phases. So I don't care what happened. I know that I'll be there. He said three phases. So that's what he wanted me to do. And works accordingly. That's what faith does. It sees what God wants. And what God wants done. And faith by revelation operates through that not some reasoning some minister I mean limiting what you're doing by his reasoning you get that and God told you on page 45 44 45 and Christ the mystery of God revealed God hid it from the five senses from the very elected teachers they cannot get it they have to believe what I'm, what I'm saying. And don't criticize it and try to have a dialogue or something. No, you just receive it. Amen. It, amen. And that's the problem. I put it this way, that was the problem. But as of now, no more problem. He that heareth, let him hear. He that forbeareth, refuse, go back. And that was my test. I had to go through that. Do you understand now? You don't have to go through that. Because you you in the thunders with everybody. But I had to pioneer out there. Nothing moving on the horizon. Here comes a colored man from New York with thunders. Now you face that. What this man talking about, New York thunders? Nothing there. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And I got a, an unbelief. And oh my God, thank God. Amen. I didn't back down for nobody. God said so. Amen. Maybe seated. And here come some critics. They didn't pioneer anything out there. They're only basking in the rewards of my labors. And they got something to criticize. And faith operates through that. Faith is a long range vision. It doesn't lower its sights. It'll take a binocular look down there. It looks down there. Okay. Everybody feeling fine. Glory. Okay. God built his church on spiritual revelation. Okay. Anointing was the end time, page 14, paragraph 53. You said it wasn't a revelation. What is faith? Faith is something that's revealed to you. Here it is that is not yet will you finally understand it but you believe it will be i believe seven thunders inspiration will give me rapture and faith faith for rapture and grace i believe that but it's not yet it wasn't yet then but i believe it and i speak it so what is faith? You may be seated. Faith is something that is revealed to you, to me, or you, whatever, whoever. That is not yet. But you believe it will be. Faith is a revelation of the will of God. 
So by revelation, Noah, by revelation, Abraham, by revelation, Moses, all the way down through, read the book of Hebrews. Revelation. You got it now? Understand my ministry now? Thanks be to the living God. Amen. Okay. On today's tape, I think I'll read this to you. Because this is what it actually has already happened to you. Uh, uh, St. Luke uh, 24, 45. He opened the understanding to the scriptures in the upper room there. I mean, before they got up there. The message of the Son of Man was capped off with a capstone revelation in St. Luke 24. Then the Bible became a new Bible. That's what, what's going to happen. It's going to be, be a new message to you now. Praise God. He opened their understanding, and they didn't have the Holy Ghost. See? But a capstone revelation revealed to them, you're going to receive the Holy Ghost. You can't fail. You got it? You're following in the perfect order. You have a revelation. Oh, uh, who the men say I am? Some say you're William Branham, and some say you're this and that. I don't know, but I know this. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That was the revelation that sufficed, that held them. See, it holds you until re he revealed resurrection faith. Until he appeared to them, and then he opened the word to them. With the word open, the message of the Son of Man went right into the word. They had anointed faith. They went in the upper room for 10 days. No doubt, no unbelief. They knew that they were going to receive the Holy Ghost. And a thing was revealed to you. So you in the same spot right now. Revelation. So they entered in there with a perfect faith. They were praising and blessing his name. They were absolutely, positively. And then when the Holy Ghost fell... When the dynamics falls today, there ain't going to be no confusion. There ain't going to be no, there's going to be a five-fold ministry that's going to have the revelation. And just like Peter, when the Holy Ghost fell, Peter had his understanding open to the scriptures so that there wouldn't be no confusion. There ain't been no confusion with me. Maybe somebody reasoning don't understand what I'm talking about. And you have confusion, but I don't have no confusion. Because I have rightly divided the word around the world. And if I didn't, there would, the show wouldn't be no meeting like that in Penn Harris. God vindicated my inspiration. Are you bragging, Brother Coleman? No, I'm just telling you facts. Peter stood up and said, this is that mystery of Joel 2.28. Christ is this mystery that you feel, that you see being shared aboard out here. This mysterious Joel 2.28 that they read over and over, Christ revealed it. The new wine come. And so, there, so will there come a day, I believe it's tonight, it's 1976, 30 years ago, that 2 Peter 1, 4 through 7, uh, through charity, will be able to say, this is that that the prophet Malachi for spake of, here it is. I believe that's going to transpire on the third phase. Well, I don't want to go much longer. I want to get this tape on. So, you got a little bit more time? So, thanks be to God, because I have the tape as a long tape. But we're in the Seventh Thunder Revival. So thanks be to God, there's no confusion today. We know that we're on the third phase place in Christ. No confusion. Church, the Holy Spirit told me that you have to start the revival according to Malachi 4's revealed word. Let me hit, hit it quickly. Uh, expectations, Long Beach, California, 1961. Now, no minister can bring a revival. Yet he has his ministers ready for the revival. There's no preacher can bring a revival. He doesn't pack it with him. The only thing he can do is just be loyal to God and his word. Here we go, church. Now I got you. And revival has to come by the people. 
in your home, in your life. So now you know, now revival isn't adding new members to the church, it's reviving that what we've already got. To revive means to bring back. So now I got you. So now the Lord revealed the seven thunders. Because Brother Bram spoke on influence. He said the seven thunders not even written is being manifested. Well, how could it be manifested if the people didn't even know what it was? So he said a seven thunder revelation to put seeds into you. So when the manifestation comes, it'll manifest what's in you. You got it now? Now, uh, because it means, now May 7, 1946, uh, Pentecost was dead 40 years, they were judged, and we've been judged for 40 years also. 66 up to now, they were judged from 1906 to 1946. And the angel descended May 7, 46, at the end of 40 years in April 9th, 06. Is that correct? But what did they have? What did they have? They had seeds in them. For what? For the baptism, for gifts, and for healing. So what did Brother Bram do? Brought a revival of what was in them. Oh, okay. You got it? Those were the seeds that was in Pentecost. So God sent a revival of the Holy Spirit to revive those seeds. And thousands upon thousands received the Holy Ghost. And millions were healed. And many gifts were given out. Now we come down to now. Hey! Seven Thunder Revival. Okay, now we got it. You may be seated. We're on the beam now. Next, in his third pool, he revealed all the seven thunder mysteries as seeds. In September 20, 1974, this inspiration was picked up by a ministry. However, now a minister cannot bring a revival. No preacher can do it. The seven thunder has to come by the people in your homes, in your life. Just kind of picking this up again. In case you were shouting, you missed that. So a revival is reviving that, uh, uh, that what we already got. Seventh Thunder revival is in two parts. One, Seventh Thunder inspiration gives you a perfect standing by revealing your name is in the Lamb's blood section of the Book of Life. Just like the sister Joanne there, uh, do set there. She saw her name. Well, that's what the thunders is supposed to do. That's why you can tell who, who, who sees their name. Because they come in here, they're praising God, they're thanking the Lord. They don't sit dead in here. Amen. The seven thunder, because the, the seven thunders is a revelation, maybe seated, of which seeds to sow for the bride's seventh thunder revival. You got it? These seeds were hidden in Revelation 10, verse 3 and 4. They were sealed up on the backside of the Bible as the hidden mysteries. And that was the revelation of them hidden mysteries, and they are the seeds to sow for your seventh thunder revival. And that was given to you for 32 years. Now do you understand what I've been doing for the past 32 years? I sowed those seeds from the hidden mysteries of Revelation 10, verse 3 and 4. A seven, and it was a seven thunder revelation revival. All these uh, 30 years. One, however, sad to say, However, the seventh thunder revelation revival was only a spiritual awakening and a dip of the spirit. 
why a mixed multitude came also for the spiritual blessings and they walked away. Many ministers walked away and people right in here. I don't know how many left out of here. It's a mixed multitude. But today, on this third phase, place in Christ, different now. We need a seven thunder revival manifestation, which is part two. In two parts. Part two, seven thunder manifestation. Part one gave, uh, gave you a perfect standing. The revelation of the seven thunders as mechanics, the faith, the blood, the seed. Two, part two, this will give you a perfect state. A perfect standing, you never, you saw your name in a book, you never did it in the first place. You already glorified. See? Now, before you can hit that resurrection, you're gonna have a perfect state. The manifestation of the seven thunders dynamics to your mechanics. Charity coming down in Penn Harris, June 27th through June 30th, 2006, disguised as virtue powerful service to form you into the word image, then sealed by charity, then positionally placed as adopted sons and daughters of God for the end time. Your adoption brings you into a perfect state making you ready for the resurrection to bring up the dead in Christ, even Hebrews 11, 39 and 40. We're here. So today we need a seven thunder manifestation revival, seven thunder manifestation revival on this third phase to revive the seven thunder seeds in you by revelation and shake what seed is already in you, shake it into a manifestation of seven living voices. And that's the thunder that'll shake the devil. So New York and PA and the internet, God has called forth his fivefold ministry to give them the ministry of the spirit, to quicken the ministry of the word in you. Ask what you will is a, is a prophecy of this ministry coming forth. This is June 20, 1973. I'll just share with you quickly. And uh, speaking here on this message, I was preparing the people to pray for Sister Coleman, June 20th, 1973. And then I was speaking about Joseph Perfection and so forth and David. But I'm rushing now. So no, I'm talking about, no, I'm not talking about one person. I'm talking about the real, true prophetic bride. Oh, here's the prophecy. There's apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and teachers yet. And God's going to show them. Here's what he's going to show them. He's going to manifest them through the dynamics, which just happened. 73, prophecy. They're scattered out around here, and they're teaching the word of God. But he's going to call them forth. And they're going, to stand, they're going to stand up and go after the lost. Where's that at? Revelation 22, 17. You got it? So this prophecy came to pass in Penn Harris. A portion of the fivefold ministry came forth as a sign under the ministry of the Spirit to quicken the seeds from the ministry of the Word. Did you notice he's going to manifest them through the dynamics that's why I kept telling the brothers, you got to wait for the dynamics. You can do a little work out here, sure, but he'll call you by the dynamics. And the dynamics came forth as virtue, powerful service, even the ministry of the Spirit, June 20th. Uh, come unto me and drink. I almost got it here. I think I'll cut some of this off here. Okay, uh, man, my wife's eye. Well, I'll just leave this here. <clears throat> Okay, I had, to, I had the prophecy back there on June 20th, and, uh, and what, uh, some of it's right here. Okay, so, so it's only been waiting for the second part of David's prophecy. I'll read it over to you again. What is it? Intellectual powers. David's ministry is finally going to come on the scene and slay Goliath in the forehead. When the revelation of Jesus Christ 
goes to Connecticut, Indiana, Tucson, Georgia, and South America, and all the different places. It will slay Goliath, lay him out flat. Then I'm, this is 1981. Then I said hey, about three years ago, the Holy Spirit said, "That's an or a, a conjunction." Then He revealed to me, at a later time, you'll see the sheep of God. They're still out there. They're, they're over there under Revelation 22:17, because. All of us is only 120, but there's 3,000 over there. You got that one? Okay. Many of the sheep are still pinned down, but in a conjunction, a later time, he's going to slay Goliath. He's going to call a special group out. That's you. And they're going to believe the thunders across the world. And here it is, and they're going to gather in Penn Harris to bring down the power. 1981. I wish I was well, I could talk to you, but amen. So, you got that one there, a special group? <laughs> You're going to call them out. And they're going to believe the thunders across the world on the internet. And they're going to gather in Penn Harris to bring down the power. Amen. Well, New York and PA and internet, did, you, did this come to pass? Amen. Well, then the third pull, the opening of the word, uh, uh, is here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. As, and also, and my, and, uh, our third phase has connected, uh, has connected to the third pull. Amen. The four are manifestation of Brian's seventh under revival. To all the sheep, you must approach God's fivefold ministry gifts the right way. I got a quote here. Just happened to be talking, having fellowship with Brother Carlos Moreno yesterday. And then he told me about a quote. I said, oh, I said fax that to me because it'll fit in here today. Uh, this is a quote from the message about Jesus, June 12, 1955. Where, where Brother Bram spoke about the, the confidence we should have in our pastor and the way to approach the gift of God. Quote, Jesus was baptized and went into the wilderness and there was for 40 uh, days tempted of the devil. Look when he came out of the wilderness. Uh, he came out preaching, doing signs and wonders. His mercy got so great that he was sent away from home. I believe God gave him a vision to go away. It proved that God gave him a vision. When Lazarus got sick, he went away. They sent for him, and he kept going. They sent for him again, and he kept going. If your pastor do that, you will never go back to that church again. That's the reason your pastor can't do nothing for you. You have to believe him to be a man of God. Later on, Brother Bram spoke about Martha and Mary, how they left their church to follow Jesus. They gave all they had, and now their brother is dead. The man they had confidence in would not come when they sent for him. Then Brother Bram spoke about the respectful way Martha received Jesus, calling him by his rightful title. He said, it shows it's the way you approach the gift of God that determines what you're going to have out of it, the way you approach it. So, the minister can't bring revival, but if it's God's gift and you know it is, approach it the right way, and you'll get blessed. Amen. So, in your homes, in your life, to revive means to bring, to revive the seventh and the seeds already in you. That's a revival. And so... Set your affection on things above, on the third phase. Accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, and don't mess and miss in between. Amen. Philippians 4, 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, lovely of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, uh, think on these things. Get out of the humanistic realm and all that's going on down, down there. Forget it. And be in confidence of this very thing 
that the work that the Holy Spirit will start in you on the third phase, God will perform it until you adopt it. So the Holy Spirit that spoke the two things was needed for New York and so forth. He told me the seven thunder seeds to go back into people and a seeds of brotherly kindness. So that's where we are and that's what I'm going to do. He told me to do that and then we'll have a revival. Amen. So he told me to play the following message, Seven Live Voices, Canada, 1976, 30 years ago with your understanding open to the opening of the word and then next Sunday anointing commission Beaumont and then Sunday night forgiving for Christ's sake so now be under expectation okay maybe seated and uh, expectation now if God has promised a revival here we're going to have it let's make ready for it if God has promised to heal let's make ready for it all the hard cases. If Jesus said, the works that I do, shall you do also? Let's make ready for it. Move out everything. Get ready. We're right in time. I'm expecting the Holy Ghost to come down and set in order a church that will go to meet him, filled with the power and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm expecting that. I believe it. God promised it, that there's to be a church there without spot or wrinkle I'm expecting it to be because God said so. That's it. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. My, my, my. Well, I'll leave that. Okay, we're here. God bless you. Enter into the revival. So be on the expectation, amen, like Simeon was. You may be seated. Let me tell you something. Uh, September the 8th, 11, 15, and 18, he gave me four foundation messages in 74. Armageddon, uh, consecrated temples, and then um, Christ in his temple, and then on the 18th, or Wednesday night, I preached on Simeon. And Friday morning, September 20th, I was studying uh, the statue of a perfect man and it thundered. But I was under expectation. So you be under expectation and I know it will thunder. God bless you.